lottery. Did you see how big the lottery is? $173 million. Can you imagine what I could do if I was to win that? Um, that is a lot of money, but it's just not worth it. Well, I know Jehovah doesn't want us to gamble, but what would be the harm in just spending a few dollars just to have a chance to win that money? Just think of all the things I could do with it. I could donate most of it to the organization and, you know, to help with the expansion of the kingdom work. And I could help my family. And I could even help the brothers and sisters in the congregation. Well, that's really kind of you, but let's look at the reality of it and really get to home with you for a minute. You know, the Bible doesn't specifically mention gambling. But at Ephesians 5.17, it tells us to go out to see what the will of Jehovah is. So that would be the bottom line, what is important to Jehovah, how does he feel about it. And what we could do is look at different Bible principles to understand what his viewpoint is. You know, so many people dream of striking it rich in just one easy stroke. But now, you're not outright stealing when you're gambling, but think about where the money is coming from. You know, I once read that from... For every one millionaire that is created by winning it big, millions have lost their money. This is really contrary to what the Bible teaches us at Ephesians 4.28. Let's look at that. When we get there, if you could read that. Ephesians 4.28 says, Let the one who steals, steal no more. Rather, let him do hard work, doing good work in his hands, so that he may have something to share with someone in need. So according to this scripture, how should we earn our money to help others? Well, it does tell us we have to work hard. Yes. So we can see that from this scripture that by winning the lottery to help others, wouldn't be in harmony with Jehovah's thinking. Let's also turn back to Proverbs, and let's start in verse chapter 20. I look chapter 20. And I'll read verse 21 to start. And that says, an inheritance of king first by greed will not be a blessing in the end. And let's go over to chapter 22 and verse 29. It says, have you seen a man skillful at his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before common men. So let's read some of this. Would you agree that someone who would gamble, maybe they'd be doing it with greed? Well, I suppose that could be true. Yes, so here's telling us if it's done out of greed, there wouldn't be a blessing. But what if it was accomplished with hard work? Well, it tells us that a person would stand before kings. So it would actually result in a blessing. Obviously, it would have Jehovah's approval. Yes, and you know, many lottery winners and, gamblers and other gamblers have learned to their regret or sorrow that the riches they won didn't bring them happiness. So we would want to build our hope on fantasy or look for shortcuts to happiness or blessings. You know, there's another side to gambling besides winning and losing. Some people fall, gam um, addiction, <laughs> fall victim to gambling addiction, and it entangles them. Um, many times they have a hard time escaping that addiction. Sometimes it just starts their family and their career and much more. So it's very sad. How much better to wrap up a bunch of those promises? Let's look at one more reason in this regard. Let's turn to Ecclesiastes. And if you could read, first of all, chapter 2 and verse 24. 2, 24. There is nothing better for a man than to eat and drink and find enjoyment in his hard work. This, too, I have realized is from the hand of the true God. Okay, and then if you could read 3, verse 13. That says, also that everyone should eat and drink and find enjoyment for all his hard work. It is the gift of God. So this was King Solomon talking here. And remember, he had many riches and much wisdom. But what did he tell us? What is important? <coughs> that it was the hard work. And that we would find actually enjoyment. Yes. So we need to work hard and pay attention to the hope is you want. And we will receive blessings and be much happier. Um, just think, Jehovah doesn't need a lottery winner to accomplish his purpose. 
We know that no matter what he purposes, it will always be successful. And not one person can stand in what he wants to do. You know, Sally, I guess you're right. I guess I was not really thinking correctly. So thank you for 